Mr. Powell, I'm arresting you on suspicion of the murder of Saskia Stanley. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence. You do not mention when questioned something you later rely on in court. I just pulled a cracker, Jules. Murder. Well, Tony claims that Saskia wanted to end her life. He assisted her, whereas the family argued that he murdered her in order to get his hands on her will. What the prosecution will seek to prove is this. Anthony Powell, prematurely and deliberately, ended the life of Saskia Stanley. It was her idea. Why, why would she want to do that rather than talk to her family? Well, she was in unbearable pain. He tried to persuade her that he could help her end her own life more quickly, so she would avoid the pain of the last stages of cancer. What if Tony did what Mum wanted? She would have told us. During my time as a police officer, I've looked into a lot of guilty faces. That's what I saw in his eyes. I knew he'd done it. I'd given up for 12 years. I discussed it that bit. Technically, I should have called the police when you rang. Why didn't you then? Because I think you know that running away is not the answer. I think that's why you called. I know I'm innocent, but listening to that evidence that's coming, if I was on the jury, I'd think I'd done it. It's only been one day. I'm going down, Mr Riddle. You will be if you run. I can tell you that. You'll be caught, there'll be a retrial, and what's a jury going to think then? Come on, let's... Let's give you the best chance. Yes? Now, is there some other reason you can think of for running away? Something you haven't told us? I need a bed for the night. Yeah, of course. Well, that was one of the more unusual evenings I've had. Wasn't it? Think he'll be there tomorrow? I'm not sure he's got the guts to run. I think he's just scared. Well, aren't we the amateur psychologists? <laughs> At least you didn't call it women's intuition. I might have had to have hit you. I'd like to see you try. <laughs> hey, I've got a pretty tasty right hook on you, you know? Well, that better be nice to you, then. And I'll try not to screw up again, eh? I don't want to give the likes of Valerie any more ammunition. It's a deal. I'll see you tomorrow. See you. that expression. It's the harbinger of doom. This contact and residence hearing versus Paul Carrington. Paul Carrington? Don't tell me you hadn't noticed. I'd noticed, but it hadn't crossed my mind it'd be a problem. Surely it's all water under the bridge. But if it still gets under your skin, I can put it on for someone else. 
Too ridiculous. I'm a big girl. I'll manage. Good, because Carrington's on his way over with his client for a session of negotiation. And while we're still on the unhappy union of business and pleasure, I wondered if you'd notice anything untoward going on with Ridley and his minion. What have you heard? Nothing yet, but why else would he appoint a junior on a case as important as that? I don't care if she turns out to be Rumpole. She's a pupil. Morning. Oh. We were just talking about you. Anything else I can help you with, Valerie? And what can I do you for? Prosecution have a witness, a graphologist, and it seems as though there's a oh, case... I heard the Greenberg case. Graphologist. The infamous, pompous Mr. Cook. Their lordship should be really on the appeal today, I hear. And you want someone on the spot, so if the judgment comes through in time, Mr. Ridley can use it to discredit the ghastly graphologist. That's about the size of it, yes. I know a couple of people there, so you hang on a minute, I'll put the call in. You know, a lot of people were surprised when Mr. Ridley appointed you as junior on this case. And now we know why. Oh, Martin. Hi. It's uh, Gordon McAllister. Yes, yes. Really? You're going to give Tony a lift? No, oh, fine. I'll take you, mate. I can manage. I'll be there, OK? Good luck. Bye, then. As you can see, things are much better between her and me. Everyone has their rough patches, mate. So what about today? Will you get to give evidence? Maybe. Depends how far the case gets. You'll feel a lot better once you get a chance to give your side. I don't know. I think the jury will find it hard to understand why I did it. I think you do too. I've never said that. I think you believed you were doing the right thing. But you don't. She was going to die in excruciating pain. How could I not give her what she wanted? I, th I guess I just struggle to imagine being able to do it. Yeah, and so did I. Look, I don't know what I would have done. The point is, you did what you thought was right. I know you're a good bloke. Yeah, but the jury don't. And the prosecution are going to slaughter me. It was an act of love. That's what they don't understand. It was an act of love. This is nice. Isn't it? I don't know what I'd do without you. I'm not going anywhere, don't worry. <gasps> you okay? Shame they won't let you administer it. You could give me a bit extra. Tony Powell. I hope Saskia take her own life according to her own wishes. This is a good bad now. You better get going. Good luck, mate. Morning. Glad I ran into you. Uh, listen, uh, it was wrong of me to discuss Ridley's private affairs with you. Quite wrong. No harm done. So uh, don't mention it to him. Hmm? Uh, I wasn't planning to. Good. I think he'd be quite cross, especially if he thought I was gossiping about the whole Valerie thing. Anyway, 
I'll see you in court. Mr. Parhey. Oh, it's only pretty prompt, isn't it? Thought we talked him around. So did I. He did seem pretty scared, though. Maybe he's bottled it. Hey, let's not go there just yet. What's the news on the graphologist's appeal? The judgment's slightly to be today, but not necessarily this morning. We're really in an angle on this guy. The jury believes the goodbye note is yeah, fake, but not then first, though. we're up against it. Well, is a bit of time. Yeah, forensic pathologist is first. Ah, good morning, Mr. Palm. I had my brake light kicked in this morning, then I got pulled over for it by the cops. You know who's behind it? Are you going to try and tell me it was coincidence? Uh, yes, Mr. Powell, I think it probably was. Shall we? How uh, easy is it for a lay person to inject themselves in the arm? It's surprisingly difficult. The issue is finding the vein. It takes practice. How much more difficult would it be if you were in Saskia Stanley's feeble physical state? I wouldn't like to say. Well, more or less difficult than normal? More, I suppose. Describe to us what you'd have to do. Well, uh, you would have to prepare the diamorphine solution and fill the syringe, then uh, apply a tourniquet and hold it tightly while you find the vein with the needle. Yes, fr from what angle? Where would your arm be? Uh, so you'd have to bring your arm right round. It's quite a physical action. Could you do that while you were lying down? I think that would be very difficult. Thank you, Your Honour. Mr Robinson, were there not in fact signs that uh, Mrs Stanley had indeed been practising injecting herself? There were other needle marks on her arms, but that may have been from other drugs that had been administered to her, or blood tests, for example. So it's impossible to say. Uh, you say it's hard for a lay person to find a vein. Is that true of everybody? Well, some people struggle, others less so. Right, so let's just say Mrs. Stanley was one of those people who found it relatively easy. Could she have done it? Objection, Your Honour. The witness is being asked to speculate. Indeed. Well, let us be clear, then. You wouldn't rule out the possibility that Mrs. Stanley could have administered the injection herself? No. No, I would not. Thank you. I was just coming to find you. I believe you and Mr. Carrington are acquainted. Valerie, what a pleasant surprise. Paul? Oh. My face lit up when I saw your name in the brief. I have to say, you're looking marvellous. Thank you. Meanwhile, I've put on a stone and I look knackered. But you can't live life in the fast lane without a bit of collateral damage. I'll leave you to it. Shall we cut to the chase? Is that a come on? So you think we can knock their heads together without a scrap in court? I see no reason if your client's in a reasonable and mature mood. Your client doesn't want residence? No, he just wants to be able to see his kids regularly. So what are all these conditions? Your client must stop threatening legal action for non-payment of maintenance when my client has never missed a single payment. And? She needs to stop the weird late-night phone calls. There's no evidence for that. Au contraire. The phone company was very helpful. Your client sounds like a classic wronged woman. She needs to move on. Then we can wrap this up and go for lunch. I swear by Almighty God that the evidence I shall give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Any word from Gordon's contact? No, nothing yet. When you're ready, Mr. Metzler. Mr. Cook, uh, how long have you been working? Hi, Gordon. 
the appeal through? Oh, great. Many thanks. Could you fax it over? I owe you. Thank you. What's your fax number? To my darling children, my family and Neil, I'm so sorry, but I could go on no longer. I love you all. Remember me fondly, Saskia. Now, uh, you've studied several of Saskia Stanley's letters. Do you think this is her handwriting? I think there are significant anomalies. If you compare with her normal writing, the downstroke of the G is quite different, as is the formation of the A's and the T's. It's also interesting that the handwriting in the note is heavier and thick-lined. And um, what would that signify? Leaning on something soft when you were writing? Or, if you were trying to copy somebody else's writing, you'd write more slowly, thus your pen would be in contact with the paper for longer, leaving heavier and thicker strokes. Do you think that this is Saskia Stanley's handwriting? Well, it's difficult to be certain, but I have some reservations as to its authenticity. Uh, thank you, Mr. Cook. No further questions, Your Honour? <coughs> Mr. Ridley. Uh, <coughs> Mr. Cook, 90 different cases. That's an awful lot of work. Uh, Your Honour, excuse me for one second. Mr. Cook, do you recall uh, giving evidence in a case last year, Crown versus Greenberg? I do, yeah. Uh, that case went to appeal, and I can tell you now, the Court of Appeal have just overturned the original verdict. Uh, Your Honour, if I may, I'll just uh, quote from their Lordship's judgment. The evidence of Mr. Cook was speculative, unscientific, and unsubstantiated, and the case should never have relied upon it so strongly. Mr. Cook, I have to ask you now, in what way is the evidence you've given today any different from the evidence that Lord Justice Clancy described as speculative, unscientific, and unsubstantiated? I happen to disagree with that statement profoundly. I'm sure you do. You'd be out of a job if you didn't. No further questions, Your Honour. I don't see why I should agree to a thing. He's the one who dumped me and shacked up with another woman. It's important to remember that if we can find a common agreement, it'll make life less stressful for you and your children. Yeah. So we agree about the phone calls and the legal threats? He only responds to threats. Have the threats worked? Have you got what you wanted? Okay. Good. This is a real step forward. I think we're getting somewhere. But I am not having that woman round when the kids are visiting. My counterpart is putting that to your husband, but I think it's very unlikely he'll concur. She's poisoning my kids against me. Mrs. Turner, I know this is awkward, but if Guy's partner is living with him, we can't really ask her to leave every time your children come to visit. Fine, then we've got no agreement. Let's take it to the judge and Guy can go to hell. The cheek, the cheek of the woman. She doesn't get to tell me who I see and when I see them. Quite agree. She gave up that right when she ended it. Not that it matters now. Circumstances have changed. Oh, thanks. I'm well done, by the way. That turned out pretty nicely. A bit too close for my liking. Mm. Did you see Messler? <laughs> Sat there pretending like he didn't care. Ah. I know we got under his skin. Now we just have to make it count. You know, you do sound slightly unhinged when you talk about Metzler. What can I say? He's everything I don't like about the legal world wrapped up in one person. He's good, though. Hey, whose side do you want? I'm just saying. Oh. Hello? Oh, Gordon. Yes, just in the nick of time. 
We're very grateful. Well, court's back in session in less than an hour. And... Yes, I suppose I could pop over. Payback. Got to run Gordon an errand, apparently. There's no harm in keeping in his good books, especially with that vote coming up. There's been an important development. We need to see the judge right away. Some jurisprudence on damages awarded to poorly executed hip replacements. You'll be able to manage that in your lunch hour, I would have thought. Yeah, perhaps use it for. Long running case that Valerie's been working on. She'd be most grateful. I realise uh, this is unusual, Your Honour, but the prosecution would like to call a further witness. Uh, Tamsin Hatfield was a junior solicitor at the firm where the deceased altered her will, and we've just discovered that she's back in the country visiting family. Her testimony is vital and sheds new light on the prosecution's case. Why was she not available before this time? Um, she had emigrated to Australia, Your Honour, and so wasn't available when the police were looking for witnesses. Unfortunately, she is in fact due to fly back to Melbourne late this afternoon, and so this would be our only opportunity. The new girlfriend is no more, so we can tick off that issue. Really? She didn't stick around. Well, probably because your client was breathing down her neck. Mm, yeah, I'm sure it was all her fault. Still, this should help us enormously. I hope so. I have to say, I think your client's been very difficult considering she ended the relationship. Well, I mean, quite the contrary, he ended it. He's insisting that is not the case. So is she. <laughs> How can they not agree on why they split up? And you row, you blame each other, and then you make up the story of what happened in your head. Is that right? Yeah. That's what you do. <gasps> These idiots are still in love. Is that feminine intuition? No, it's basic emotional intelligence. Not exactly your forte. Um, here's the jurisprudence research that you needed. Thank you. That was quick. There was no rush. Ask you to change the will. Did you row? What do you mean, row? Or did you argue a falling out before you went inside? I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, she was upset because. Because what? Because she was changing the will. Because she was thinking about her life coming to an end. Because she was sat in a wheelchair in unbearable pain. What is the problem here? The problem is that we have a witness statement from someone. It's not a problem, Mr. Powell. It's just that the new witness we have to deal with. We're just re-establishing the facts. Saskia wanted to go to the solicitors. I thought it was a bad idea, not least because her mobility had become a real problem. But she was determined, so that was that. I never asked her what it was about, I swear. He's 
not budging, is he? Guy's single again, Stella. And apparently rather upset that you left him. But I didn't leave him. He left me. Come in. Could my client speak with your client in private? We'll give you both a minute. This could backfire massively. No chance it's in the bag. Just give it a minute. It's just with anger coming out. My fault. No. Oh, God. I doff my invisible hat in your general direction. Easiest money you've ever earned. I do believe we've just played our part in keeping the divorce statistics down. So, Ms. Hatfield, let's cast our mind back to the 9th of March, six weeks before Saskia Stanley's death. You tell us when you first saw her that day. I was outside having a cigarette. Mr. Powell was helping Mrs. Stanley into a wheelchair and they were having an argument. I could hear them. Could you make out much of what was said? No. And then Mr. Powell started pushing Mrs. Stanley towards the office and I could see she was crying. I went back inside at that point. And when did you next see Mrs. Stanley? When she came into the meeting with the senior partner, Mr. Kennedy, and me. Mr. Powell brought her in and then he left. And what was the purpose of Mrs. Stanley's visit? She wanted to change her will quite radically so that Mr. Powell inherited 50% of her estate. And what had he been due to inherit previously? Nothing. Can you confirm the authenticity of this file note uh, written in your name, which states that Mrs. Stanley's estate, including her house, was worth over 600,000 pounds? Can. You know, it's rude to read people's mail. I'm sorry, it was just... Don't prove them right, Tony. Who? My family. They think you're after my money. Are you joking? <laughs> Just don't give them reasons. Uh, are you accusing me of being after your money? Oh, darling. One of the things I love about you is that you let me be independent. I'd like to keep it that way. And I think that should apply to money, too. I totally agree. I never... I honestly wasn't being nosy, I just, I had lip too. up. And you were surprised by how much I had? As you say, none of my business. No, but my company does pretty well. And I've got a few, Bob. So we have to make sure it's not an issue. Agreed. Carl says the garage has money worries. It's nothing, it's uh, just a few unpaid bills, that's all. <laughs> So, Mr. Powell was the beneficiary of this radical change in Mrs. Stanley's will. Which is why I thought it was pretty weird considering Mr. Powell had brought her here to change the will, especially after I saw them arguing. 
I found the whole thing pretty unsettling, to be honest. Objection, Your Honour. That's pure opinion. No further questions, Your Honour. I thought I wanted to see Tony go down. I wanted to see him pay for what he did. Like Dad does. Yeah. And I do. I really do. It's weird, you know. I stood up in court yesterday. Said what I wanted to say. Just thought I'd feel better afterwards. Are you going to tell him? Apparently. You should have seen the look on Tony's face when this solicitor took the stand. It was like he'd been caught red-handed. I mean, it's really gone better than we could have hoped. Where are you getting all this information, Dad? I have colleagues keeping an eye on proceedings. That's a good use of police resources. It's difficult for us not being able to watch the trial, so I thought you'd appreciate regular updates. No? You're not interested with the outcome of this? Don't be silly. Personally, I don't want to hear every detail. I just... I just want it to be over. It will be. Soon. So, how are the wedding plans going? You know you need to get your brother involved with this, don't you? He's got a great eye for design. He's going to make us all very proud one day. I failed. Say again? I failed. And I haven't gone back. I don't think architecture's for me. I thought... I thought that's what you wanted to do. No. I wanted to do fine art. But you talked me out of that, remember? I thought you loved it. No. Hated it, actually. Just too embarrassed to tell you. I know it's hard for you now. But don't give up so easily. Dan, think about your mother. You think about what your mother would have wanted. Dad, you don't know what Mum would have wanted. Not about Dan's future and not about the trial, actually. You don't know any more than we do, so just give it a rest. Really sorry, but I've got to pop out. I'm uh, sorry that we took up so much of your time. <laughs> not at all. Very gratifying to know we could help. It's not often we achieve such a satisfactory outcome. <laughs> you won't see us again. That's a promise. <laughs> While reconciliation's in the air, how about we bury the hatchet? No hard feelings? Don't push it, Paul. I'm trying to say sorry. You're trying to say sorry? Yeah. Fair enough. We had some fun, you and me. Well, we had a good time for a while. Pity we can't just pick it up when we left off. I mean, nothing serious. Just a bit of fun between us. Nothing serious. Is that how you saw us? Oh, whatever. Come on, we were hardly Romeo and Juliet. You told me you wanted to marry me. You told me you wanted to have kids. You begged me to move in with you, and then three days after you dumped me, you shacked up with a 22-year-old. Oh, yeah. Forgot about her. It's delightful to be reminded my life is so much better without you in it. How was it with Mr. Carrington? Very instructive.
Before you say anything, we are not going over old ground here. So don't ask me again about being a witness because I'm not doing it, okay? That's not why I asked you here. I found a copper by my car outside court today. He said that my number plate was down in their system as having been stolen. It took me an hour to prove that the car was mine. And someone had kicked in my brake light this morning and then lo and behold, I get pulled in on the way to court. I was nearly late. I understand if you can't stand up there and tell them what you feel to be true. And I wish there was something that I could say to change your mind. But what you can do is to tell your father to call off his cronies and leave me alone. We don't know that it's... Oh, come on, Jess. You're a bright girl. Don't patronise me. Just remind him that it's criminal that a cop can get away with acting like that. It's disgusting. He'll get what he wants in the end anyway. So why doesn't he just give it a rest, eh? I hear the judgment came in rather useful. Just a little. We're very grateful. Yeah, took you out of a little hole there, didn't we? I gave Valerie her research. She said it was an actual urgent. Oh, she got a bit mixed up. Still, it's good to see you doing a hard day's grind. Thanks again, Gordon. See, Ridley and his cheerleader are still as thick as thieves. Why are you stirring so much? Tense boredom. It's not unusual for a barrister to spend a lot of time with his junior on a case. But it's still a disciplinary offence to do any more than that. Oh, come on, Gordon. If every barrister had a dalliance with his pupil got slung out of chambers, we'd lose half our members. Yeah, but not everyone walks around like Ridley, thinking they're as pure as the driven snow. You just want some dirt on him, see, and store it up for a rainy day. It's highly speculative. I'm not being your spy. I wasn't asking. Hey. Where's Dan? He's uh, gone out with friends. Good, because I want to talk to you. Who did you go out to see? I'm not telling you unless you promise to let me speak first and not to be angry. Okay. Promise. Okay. I saw Tony. Just listen. You can get into serious trouble. You're not allowed. I'm not a prosecution witness, so that's not true, actually. Anyway, he's been harassed, Dad, by the police. What do you want me to do about that? Come on, Dad. I know about you and your mates. You're all thick as thieves. It's nothing to do with me. And if he is being harassed by my mates, it's because they care about me. And you'll just turn a blind eye. As long as you destroy Tony, that's all that counts, right? He deserves everything he gets. Is it justice you're after? Or revenge? Both! I want both. <sighs> hey, don't let Gordon wind you up. What, like Metsa wind you up? I'm sorry? We seem to have history. I don't understand why he gets to you so much. Fair enough. I remember you telling me the best way to prove myself was to ignore all the criticism and to do better than everybody else. Are you giving me a piece of my own advice? Mm. It was good advice. I think of it often. Well, thank you. <laughs> Planning a late one? Uh, I don't know yet. If he orders in pizza and beer, then you know you might as well kip here. Still, put a mattress down. Might be quite a cosy place to spend the night, I suppose. Is she jealous? Of what? Well, she seems very protective of you. Um, what are you implying, Julie? 
No sé, no sé. What, you, you want to know if I'm one of those guys that, that plays the field, is that? No, <laughs> I shouldn't have asked. It's none of my business. No, but you wondered. You're putting me on the spot. <laughs> well, come on, why did you ask? No sé, it was just something Metzler said and... What did he say? Well, I don't know. Just what did he say? He just said something about you and Valerie and... And you believed him? Well, I didn't know what to believe. Mark Metzler shoot his mouth off and you swallow it hook, line and sinker. I didn't say that. No, but you weren't sure. <laughs> it's none of my business. You're damn right it's none of your business, Julie. Metzler is a snake. He's been peddling that lie for years. Can't you see what he's trying to do here? So if it's not true, then what's the problem? Because you believed him. Because you're willing to think of me as some kind of womanizing scumbag. God, I'm sorry I mentioned it. Yeah, so am I. If you've got any more idle gossip, I suggest you keep it to yourself. Hi, this is a message for Bryony Lynch, solicitor for Tony Powell. This is Jess Stanley. I've changed my mind. If it's not too late, I am now willing to stand as a witness for the defence.